Over 10 years ago, I made a video called What Thyroid Hormone is Best for Hashimoto, Synthetic or Bioidentical? And it was uh, very, very popular. Now, it's been over 10 years, so I thought it was time to update it. So today, let's give the new updated 2023 version of which thyroid hormone is best for Hashimoto, synthetic versus bioidentical. Things like uh, DTE and Armour and Naturethroid and those kind of things. So let's get started. So why would we even care? Why is this even a question? Why is it debate? Well, because number one, people always want to debate things. Uh, but the real reason is about 15 to 20 percent of people with hypothyroidism that get treated with whatever hormone it is and their TSH normalizes, they still have symptoms. So those people are looking for a solution. And one of the potential solutions is someone will say, or they'll read something on the internet that says, hey, don't take synthetic hormones if you still have uh, thyroid symptoms, you gotta take bioidentical. Well, it's not that simple. So let's back up for a second and just talk about what is hypothyroidism. Well, hypothyroidism is when your thyroid gland does not make enough thyroid hormones. Now, essentially, there's two kinds of thyroid problems you can have. There's a quantity problem, meaning you don't make enough of them, or if you don't make too much, like Graves' disease, but you don't make enough, which is hypothyroidism, or you're not using the hormones you are making or taking. Now, blood tests can tell you all about the quantities, right? You can look at your TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And if your TSH is high, there's a really good chance your thyroid hormones being produced by your thyroid gland are insufficient, okay? And if that's the case, that's primary hypothyroidism. Now, I'll stop you there. The number one cause of primary hypothyroidism is an autoimmune problem called Hashimoto's, okay? Not an iodine deficiency, but Hashimoto's. Nine out of 10 people, at least in this country, that have hypothyroidism, okay, where the thyroid gland's not making enough hormones, that's caused by Hashimoto's. That's an autoimmune problem where your immune system is attacking the stuff inside your thyroid gland called thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin. And by virtue of doing that, it makes it difficult for you to make thyroid hormones and eventually your levels fall uh, and you get diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Okay, with that in place, well, Hashimoto's is a quantity problem. But remember, a second ago, I said there were two kinds of problems. Well, the other kind of problem you can have is a usage problem. Now, using the hormones you're making or taking is the responsibility and the function of your thyroid hormone receptors. But those are inside the nucleus of your cell. So there's not like a blood test you can do to see how are my receptors doing. We just know from a body of research that's been done that they exist and that's what they do. The problem is, is that these receptors can be blocked and blunted and caused to malfunction so that you can have normal TSH and even normal T4, even if you're taking the hormones, but not be feeling and functioning like you have a normal TSH and a normal T4. So in that situation, we've got a usage problem. Let's go ahead and tell you that 90% of the Hashimoto's patients I've seen over the last 20 years were taking thyroid medication, but they weren't feeling the way they wanted to feel. And most of those people had a usage problem. Now, the number one thing that will cause a usage problem is inflammation in the form of cytokines. But that can come from a lot of different sources. That can be diabetes. That could be a vitamin D deficiency. That could be some sort of food sensitivity. That could be uh, a gastrointestinal dysbiosis, right? So it's not just that simple. Now, synthetic hormones are things like levothyroxine, right? Now, and Synthroid, that's the generic name and the brand name. Now, that is synthetic T4. T3, leothyronine, that's the most common name for that is cytomel. And levothyroxine is by far the most common thing that's uh, prescribed for primary hypothyroidism, which is Hashimoto's. And some people do just fine with that. Their levels normalize, the TSH looks okay, the T4 looks okay, and they feel fine. But there's a bunch of people, a bunch of people that get prescribed the Synthroid, they take it the way they're supposed to, uh, their TSH normalizes, their T4 levels normalize, but they still don't feel great, meaning they could still have symptoms like depression, anxiety, weight gain, constipation, muscle and joint pain. So the, the question always is, is, well, are those residual symptoms being caused by a thyroid issue? In my mind, if it's not a quantity problem, it might be a usage problem, but it could be that they have an iron deficiency, a B12 deficiency, a problem with your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal circuit. So immediately, we've already spider webbed out, right? We're already kind of beyond the question of which thyroid hormone is the best. You gotta keep digging if you're a good doctor and say, okay, well, what is the cause of these symptoms? Well, many years ago, one of the things that popped up was this idea that 
Uh, if you're taking synthetics and you're still feeling bad, you need to take bioidentical, right? Well, what are those? Well, bioidentical, other names for that are like desiccated thyroid extract or naturally desiccated thyroid. They're all pork uh, thyroid extracts, right? We don't have to go through the history of that. But the names of those are things like armor uh, and uh, nature thyroid and WP thyroid, uh, WP thyroid and NP uh, thyroid. Those are all desiccated pork thyroid extracts. And they have in them T4 and T3. And that's a right where some of the concern comes from, right? Because levothyroxine is just T4, but you can get cytomel, which is T3, right? Well, bioidentical, okay, I guess I should stop there. The, the question about whether or not you should even be taking T3 is kind of a, a whole other issue, but it is tied into this question. So kind of follow me for a second. So those bioidenticals have T4 and T3 in them, and the ratio is like usually around 4 to 1, meaning there's about... Uh, you know, about 75% of a uh, of armor is T4 and about 25% is T3. Whereas in the human body, it's more like, you know, the thyroid gland's like 14 to 1. That's kind of not even really an issue because we're not talking about, we're talking about taking hormones, right? And so I said a second ago that should you even be taking T3? Well, a lot of reasons people say that you should take bioidenticals because uh, you're not converting the synthetic. Well, what's conversion? Well, conversion is a process where normally the, the, the vast majority of what your thyroid gland makes is T4. Well, T4 really doesn't do anything. It's got to be converted from T4 to T3. Okay, That's conversion. Well, in the bioidentical, there's T3 is already in that, right? And of course, you could take synthetic T3, and the idea is that you have a conversion problem, and you could test that this is not always correct, but you could test whether you have a conversion problem by looking at reverse T3 levels. So let me just stop there and just kind of review and make sure we're all kind of on the same page. So for primary hypothyroidism, let's just call it it's Hashimoto's, right? You can either give synthetic or you can give bioidenticals. The problem is, is some people, about 15 to 20% of people uh, that get diagnosed with hypothyroidism, when they take their medication, they still have symptoms. And so one of the camps of thought is that, ah, you need to take bioidentical because you're not using your T4 correctly. And that is implying that the people have a conversion problem. But you can test that and find out if a conversion problem is really happening. So my rule that I always tell patients is this. Now look, I don't prescribe the medication. That's fine. But almost everyone I see is taking medication. They always ask me this. So what I always tell them is, look, if you're taking a thyroid medication right now and your TSH is normal and your T4 is normal, I wouldn't recommend changing it. Why? Because you probably have a usage problem. And you probably have inflammation that's not being managed. And look, Hashimoto's is an inflammatory problem. So Hashimoto's likes to create a quantity problem and a usage problem. That's where we always start is with that. Then I say, look, if what we do just doesn't work, right, all the stuff we're going to do for your immune system doesn't work, then yeah, talk to your doctor about taking uh, either T3 or taking a bioidentical. So I hope to not really muddy the issue here, but the real question is, is, is it a quantity problem or is it a usage problem? So the answer to the question, which thyroid hormone is best for Hashimoto's, the first one is whichever one gets your numbers where they're supposed to be. Because if you have Hashimoto's and you're hypothyroid, you've got to be taking something to give you the hormones you can't make. So the first question is, are you absorbing the thing that you're taking? If you are, but you still have symptoms, you might have other things going on that has nothing to do with whether you're using your T3. Maybe you're diabetic and don't know it. Maybe you have different nutrient deficiencies. Maybe you have... Uh, like I said, a problem with your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal circuit. So you got to work with someone that can drill down and start testing for all that. Now, if you're taking whatever you're taking, if it's synthetic, like with thyroxine, your T4 is normalized, your TSH is normal, but you're still having symptoms, you might have a conversion problem, but that's got to get tested, right? So this whole issue of bioidentical, it's not that some people don't do better, because some people do. Some people definitely do better. And there's been a lot of you know, misguided uh, information, like some people are concerned that the dosage is not, or the, uh, the potency is not uh, controlled. Those are problems from 40 or 50 years ago. Generally speaking, most of the time, it's a pretty consistent potency, right? But the question is not about the potency, right? For me, and my answer to the question, the question is, do you have a quantity problem still? Well, you haven't figured out one that you can absorb. But if your quantities are normal and you're still feeling bad, why? It's not necessarily because you need to be taking bioidentical. It could be Maybe you have a conversion problem. Maybe you would use bioidentical better, but maybe you have one of these other things I've mentioned going on, like the Hashimoto's really isn't controlled. And there's things you can do to analyze that, such as chronic, uh, not, not chronic, but uh, comprehensive 
lymphocyte immunophenotyping. There's all sorts of different tests we can do to look at nutrient levels and look for sources of inflammation. Because in my experience, over the last 20 years, dealing with Hashimoto's patients and answering the question, hey, doc, which of these hormones is best? Whichever one gets your levels normal, that's the first step. The second step then is not to take T3 or, or even to take bioidenticals, but figure out what are we missing, right? What is still probably causing a usage problem? Because that is by far the most common cause of the continued symptoms, not that you need to be taking bioidentical. I don't know, maybe that's controversial, I don't know. But look, the last video I made, I got a lot of comments on it. It's 2023, it was time to make a new one. That's where I am in 2023. I hope you found that helpful. Just make sure you're working with someone that understands the full scope of what we talked about today. I'll see you next time.